Human brain is a very complex thing. We succeeded in mapping of Martian surface, and yet we are far from understanding some basic principles of brain functionality. It is not surprising then that there are many myths about brain and its secrets. For many of them we cannot say if they are true or not, simply because we don't know. Yet scientists know today more than ever before. Brain is comprised of millions of neural cells, called neurons. These cells are connected and communicate with one another, but between them there is a small space called synaptic cleft. In order to carry messages through these gaps, neurons use special chemicals called neurotransmitters. Some people call these chemicals hormones, and this is just partially true, as some of them indeed can act both as hormones and neurotransmitters. The difference is that hormones are usually secreted from the endocrine system and released into the bloodstream, and they act on distant target cells. On the other hand, neurotransmitters are released from the presynaptic nerve terminal and move from neuron to neuron through the synaptic cleft. Both hormones and neurotransmitters can affect our mood and thoughts, but they have different mechanism of action. In order to better understand chemistry that is behind our behavior and mood, we will cover both of them, with little more focus on neurotransmitters. So, if we were to make a list of the most important neurotransmitters and hormones that affect our mood and behavior, what would it look like? Serotonin, dopamine, noradrenaline, GABA, endorphin, oxytocin, allotonin, cortisol, adrenaline, testosterone and estrogen. Sounds complicated? That's because it is, and this is the main reason why mental disorders are so difficult to cure. Let's look at some of the main functions that are these chemicals suspected to have and try to make some assumptions. So first, the king of all neurotransmitters, serotonin. Its popular name hormone of happiness doesn't really describe its function, but emphasize its importance. Its main functions are in regulating mood, appetite and sleep basically the most important factors of LB. Other functions include regulating body's temperature, sexual behavior, memory and learning. Low levels of serotonin are associated with a wide range of anxiety and depressive disorders. Drugs that are used to cure these disorders, antidepressants, work by increasing the level of serotonin in synapses, thus elevating mood, appetite and other factors. Too much serotonin can cause serotonin syndrome, rare and sometimes fatal condition that is caused mainly by use of two different antidepressants in the same time. Then, the other main neurotransmitter, dopamine. Popularly labeled as a hormone of pleasure, it is also a very important chemical that can work both as a neurotransmitter and as a hormone. Its main function is in motivation. Release of dopamine creates feeling of pleasure that function as a reward for achieving some goals. Dopamine also influences thinking, alertness and move coordination. Low dopamine levels are linked to a Parkinson's disease and ADHD. On the other hand, very high levels of dopamine are associated with schizophrenia and psychosis. That's why drugs used in treatment of these conditions called antipsychotics work by blocking dopamine receptors, therefore decreasing dopamine. Dopamine and serotonin work together but sometimes in an opposite way. If you look at the motivation, for example, they both influence it, but in a different way. Low serotonin levels cause people to act, but when high levels of serotonin are achieved, motivation is lost. In a contrast, low level of dopamine cause low motivation, and high levels of dopamine cause even higher crave for dopamine stimuluses. Dopamine is the main cause of addiction. The more you have dopamine risers, more you need. Recreational drugs like cocaine or heroin increase dopamine levels, causing strong psychological and physiological need for more of them. Hallucinations that are caused by some other synthetic drugs are also linked to this mechanism. And after all, this is the reason some drugs increase the risk of developing psychosis. Low levels of dopamine can cause depression, but not anxiety, because only motivation is targeted. In contrast, low serotonin levels can cause anxiety without depression. Well, that's all for this video. Due to the complexity of the topic, we decided to divide it into three parts. In second part, we will continue to dive into hormones and neurotransmitters that are essential for our mood and behavior. If you want to know more about what gives you strength in stressful situations, 
what calms you before going to sleep, and many other things. Don't miss part 2 of this series. So, subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell icon for notifications. Thank you for watching and see you next week.